Hi, everybody. This is Darrell Lonnie with head men's basketball coach Craig Stanger. Craig, let's talk about a couple of games that you had last week, one at home, one away, uh, leading into a big week for your team with uh, the Alaska schools now coming, uh, coming to town. Up to Seattle, uh, Seattle Pacific. Uh, Thursday, start with that. Uh, very sound team, team that's leading your league, that, leading the GNAC. Uh, they are. They're a very good team. They're a disciplined team. They, they make you pay for any of your mistakes. Uh, that was a thing we knew going in. They're, they're a great transition team. If you shoot the ball early, you're ill-advised. If you uh, turn the ball over, they capitalize. And uh, uh, we knew we going in had to be very sound. <clears throat> and we did a good job of that in the first half. We controlled the tempo, shot the ball well, made good decisions, and had a, had a one-point lead at halftime. Uh, but I was concerned. You know, we, we had played probably some of our best basketball. Mm -hmm. And then to turn and see that we're only up one uh, is a concern because sure. they had not played their best basketball. And anyway, in the second half, uh, you know, it kind of snowballed on us. They were able to get some transition points on us. Uh, we forced a few things, and, and you know, before, before you knew it, the game was out of control. But you know, they're, they're a good basketball team, and, and uh, our guys competed well for a while. And, and uh, it, it's a learning opportunity for us. Saturday was high octane offense, uh, 101 to 95. I think was the final MSU Billings, senior dominated team came in, and uh, wow, they made shots from everywhere against you Saturday, didn't they? They did, and, and they are senior laden. There are a lot of teams in our conference that have a lot of upperclassmen, and, and we're young, and, and that's going to show sometimes. But you know, I thought our kids played right with them. And in fact, you know, we had a, we had a small lead at halftime. Right. Uh, they shot the ball extremely well, but so did we. And uh, it really came down to, I think, with about two two and a half minutes to go, we blinked first. You know, they, they scored. We came down and, and turned the ball over. They came down, scored again. We came down, got fouled, missed our free throws. Right. And, and then you know it turned into a five point game, and we weren't able to recover down the stretch. But uh, defense was not was not in the building that night, but I think that's a credit to both offenses uh, because it's not like we didn't try, and, and we did try to contest their shots, and, and we did a good job of keeping them off the boards. We won the board battle. Uh, we shot well, uh, just, uh, just ran into a high-octane offense, and we weren't able to get the key stops we needed down the stretch. Let's look ahead. Uh, Anchorage coming to town on Thursday, Fairbanks on Saturday. Uh, you gave Anchorage its first loss in a long, long time on their home floor back uh, earlier in the in the season, and wound up sweeping in Alaska for the, well, the first time ever. First time ever for Western Oregon. Yeah. yeah. So Anchorage, I assume, is going to be ready to play it now. Oh, they'll be ready for us, and, and they're in a position where they control their destiny. You know, we don't have that anymore. We've got to have some help. But they, you know, they're ranked in the region, and, and they can be in control, and uh, they're going to want to prove something. Definitely. They're also going to have their starting point guard back who was out with a, a broken right. leg earlier in the year. He's a very quality player. Uh, so, so that, and they'll be ready. They'll be ready for our zone and our traps and the things that we do to even the playing field. So it'll be a good test for us uh, to see how we play teams you know, the second time around. Did you think they overlooked you a little bit? Up there, uh, I won't say they overlooked us. Uh, Rusty's a good coach, and maybe the players overlooked. Yeah, uh, but you know, certainly the coaching staff didn't. We've we've been a thorn in his side off and on up there, which is always fun to do. But uh, you know, I, I think the difference is that we're a unique style, and uh, with the zone trap and the things that we do, it it tends to uh, you have to prepare differently for us. And if you don't have a lot of time, I think that gives us an advantage, and and that's. Uh, uh, so they're going to have a few days to prepare for us this time, so it'll be interesting to see how we do. Talk about, you, you mentioned the zone trap, and it's something that I've been going to ask you. Talk about that and how, uh, uh, how that came to be in, in your thinking that you decided that you wanted to go zone on defense, this particular defense where you do a lot of trapping, et cetera. What, what was your philosophy behind all this? Well, we, we really believe in getting the team to react to us. You know, any time, whether it's offense or defense, if you can get the other team to be reacting to you, you're going to have the advantage. Uh, and so that's what we try to do. We, we want to uh, control the tempo with our defense. We want to get them to react to us. Most teams are man teams, so they're going to spend 75, 80% of their practice time working on man principles, whether it's man defense, man offense. Sure. Uh, so if you suddenly have to turn around and prepare to go against zone, well, we've just taken away 75% of their practice. And, and that's the way we look at it and get them to react to us. And, and that's been the mindset this year, and it's been a pretty good one. You know, we've been able to 
obviously knock off Alaska Anchorage up there. We beat a very good central team here mm -hmm. uh, because of that. And have been in some games that we probably shouldn't have been, you know, athletically because of that. And, and the guys are working hard with it, and we, we're going to continue that focus. Fairbanks on Saturday, what do we see from them, Coach? Fairbanks is a very, very explosive team. Uh, more, you know, you know, unlike Anchorage, which is very team-oriented, play, play very well together, pass the ball well, uh, they'll work the clock for a high percentage shot. Uh, Fairbanks is completely different. Mm. Um, once it's across half court, it could go up. <laughs> and, um, there, there's not a lot of rhyme or reason, which is a, they're a scary team that way. Um, if, uh, if we can get them into the right parts of the court and to shoot up the kind of shots we want them to take, then that's good. But because they are so helter-skelter, if they, if they get on, uh, they're tough to stop. They have two very prolific scorers that will shoot it from anywhere, anytime. And when they get going, they're a tough team to stop. Next week, I'm going to ask uh, Coach about the league race. We'll have then played one more week. We'll be down to only a couple of weeks and uh, left in the season. So we'll, we'll cover that at that time and uh, who you think you know are the playoff contenders out of our league, et cetera. But in closing today, uh, Western Oregon is getting a, a new athletic director mm -hmm. who will be in here in April. Um, officially starts May 1, I think, Daniel Hare. Uh, you met with him, yes. coach, and you were on some committees and this and that, and I would be interested in your thoughts on the, on the new hire. Uh, very excited. You know, he's uh, uh, very intelligent, articulate, uh, new AD. He's not had any experience as an athletic director, but he has a wealth of experience in numerous areas that he'll be responsible for as AD. So I'm excited for him uh, to be a part of our program. Uh, I definitely think he has the vision and, uh, and the concepts and the mindset for, uh, for us to go forward in the directions we're, we're going towards. So I'm, I'm pleased and looking forward to working with him. Excellent. Head Coach Craig Stanger, this is Daryl Long.